you did a very good job in the book of just explaining to me how during development the baby's sort of like sexual reproductive organs are made you basically explained there's uh, a certain time where testosterone has an opportunity to kick in which creates this certain area on the human groin area the human groin that develops in the testes or not right and it seems like when these phthalates are introduced it stunts the growth of that area specifically correct and that's re- very well put so let me just back up and say before let's leave phthalates out of it okay just in every baby in very early pregnancy the male and the female genitals are the same right right the, they you can't separate them. You don't see ovaries. You don't see testes. You don't see penis. You know, they're just, it's actually just a ridge of tissue. Okay. Okay. And then at the critical time, which we know in rats specifically, we don't know specifically in humans, but it's early pregnancy, the testes start to form. And that's genetically programmed in an XY individual, mm-hmm. right? And so they start to form. And as they, At a certain point, they're able to produce testosterone, and they do that, okay, in the genetic male. Female also, but just a little bit, Mm -hmm. but mostly much more in the male. Okay, so what they showed in these animal studies is that when the mother was given phthalates in her food, at that time, when the testosterone is surging, that the surge is wiped out. It's mm. eliminated. The graph is very dramatic. Right. It's just completely flat in males, genetic males. So that says that that male needs that testosterone at that time to develop normally. Okay? Okay. Okay. And so the f- default, if he doesn't get it, that genital tract will remain the default, which is female. Right. Okay? Okay. So the degree to which it differentiates from the female, you know, how, so the development of the testes and the, instead of the ovaries and the development of the penis instead of the clitoris and so on and so forth, that, the degree that that separation takes place is dependent upon this hormonal surge. Okay, that makes okay? sense. Okay. And there's a large variation uh, in how developed the genitals can be with these babies. Right, that's correct. And how, so... In your book, you described um, the this lady, Tracy, and her son, Bar- Barry, who was a boy who identified as a girl. Um, what sort of correlation did you find with children, specifically with gender dysphoria, and as it relates to sort of like a, it seems like a, a more recent surge with transgender, the transgender movement? I know there's no actual evidence that there's been no real studies done on it, but what was your take on that? And did you, do you suspect there is a connection? So first of all, in terms of our studies, we did not study that. We did not have children. We did not get information on sexual identity from children. That is an important study and it should be done. And that should be related to, chemicals that they were exposed to Mm. um but that has not been done i my suspicion is that just as the generals differentiate into male and female the brain also does and we know that there are for example you know men This is a stereotype, okay? And it's a social stereotype. And so it's very politically very difficult. But there are certain things like socialization seems to be easier for females and um, uh, spatial uh, ability to manipulate things spatially, which is testosterone dependent, seems to be stronger in genetic males. That's testosterone dependent? Like, spatial, like yeah. visual spatial recognition? Yes, yes. You ask men to rotate a figure in space in their minds, they can do that and much more quickly and easily than females. That's really? A, yeah, that's a... Throughout th- life or only in early no, like, I, puberty? No, it's not 
I don't know. Okay. But my understanding is it's throughout life. Okay. Yeah, not early pre-period. I don't. So in any case, there there is a difference. There's no question there's a diff- some differences in the development of the brain and that these are governed by, in part by testosterone as well as the genitals. So it it's very conceivable to me that possibly the surge of chemicals which can impact the body's hormones might be doing something somewhat different in the brain and in the genitals. So, it, 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 you know, they, mm-hmm. they could have maybe no little effect on, on the genitals and, the, and physiologically the child could be male typical if he's a genetic male, but perhaps the surge to the brain has limited the development in that direction. Right. So this is just a v- wild hypothesis and maybe totally wrong, but I believe that these changes that are important and hormonally driven are happening in utero. And I th- so I think that whatever we find as we go down the road uh, for gender dysphoria and uh, is going to relate to exposures Mm -hmm. in utero that's the only hypothesis i have whether it's going to be due to a specific chemical or a class of chemicals or not and let me just say that this whole area is very difficult because it's difficult for trans people and i totally understand that because it it medicalizes Mm -hmm. their identity Mm -hmm. it says why are you like this and we don't ask that generally, <laughs> you know, about, you know, and, and, and it's similar concerns for people who have other atypical development, for example, ASD people and so on, right. you know, what causes that? Well, I'm not sure that that question is f- yet we've learned how to phrase that question in a way that does not make people feel that the way they are is the way they should not be. Right. And I don't want to give that impression. <laughs> 